Senator Mike Lee, because I will lead and not follow, I believe and not doubt, I will create, not destroy, because I'm a force for good, I'm a force for God, I'm a leader, and we can define, uh, defy the odds, I need your help today in understanding the news and where we go from here, because if it's, if it's not this... It will be something because we're facing constitutional crisis after constitutional crisis. And uh, I'm, I'm not sure how to react, but I know there's a lot of people saying this is out of line. We should ignore the Supreme Court, but that makes us them. But what else are you going to do? First, let's go over what the Supreme Court decided yesterday, Mike. Okay, so yesterday the Supreme Court issued an order, not an opinion, just a very brief order, undoing uh, an order that was released by the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit on December 19th. Now, remember, the, the Courts of Appeals are, are, um, are numbered throughout the country. The Fifth Circuit includes the state of Texas. Uh, and uh, the Fifth Circuit on December 19th had issued an order in joining the uh, Biden administration from taking down barriers put in place by uh, the state of Texas. See, the state of Texas um, wanted to make sure that um, they restore some semblance of the rule of law in their state. Mm -hmm. They decided to put up these barriers along the border, say, we, we, we don't want to do this. The Biden administration started taking actions indicating its plans to take down the concertina wire and uh, the other barriers. So Texas uh, brought suit against the Department of Homeland Security and others in the Biden administration and said, we want an injunction telling them, telling the Biden administration that may not take down these barriers. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals on December 19th uh, issued such an injunction. And immediately, the Biden administration went to the Supreme Court and filed an emergency application to vacate that injunction. In other words, to, to undo it. And the operative portion of the order from yesterday is just found in a sentence. It's inclusive of a total of four sentences, but this one is, is, is the operative language. The December 19th, 2023 order of the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit is vacated. That's it. Then there's a separate line that says Justice Thomas, Justice Alito, Justice Gorsuch, and Justice Kavanaugh would deny the application to vacate the injunction. So with, with that, the Supreme Court of the United States just undid this. And what this tells us then is that it was Chief Justice Roberts, along with Justice Kagan, Justice Sotomayor, and Justice Jackson, who were in the majority on this. And that is all we know about their rationale, all we know about what happened. So all of a sudden, Texas, having won this uh, round of litigation, the previous round of litigation in the Court of Appeals, is now sort of back to square one, being told you lose. And yet we don't have the analysis as to why or what this means, and everything is in a state of disorder. So, uh, first of all, can you explain uh, Barrett's joining the other side? I mean, uh, any guess to what she was thinking? Yeah. Okay. So all I can do is guess. Uh, all I can do is offer conjecture uh, because there's no analysis. If I were to guess, I... I, I Hang on just a sec. Before I, you I go wonder, on, is that unusual yeah. that there was no analysis? It's not unusual given the procedural posture in okay. which they find themselves. In other words, this side of the court's docket, the emergency applications doc, docket, uh, is itself something that the justices have to do as they're doing their other ordinary business, as okay. writing opinions in other cases. Okay. And they, 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 because of the nature of it, it's, it's a yes or no, uh, up or down thing most of Got the time. It. So okay. that part's not surprising. But it is surprising, given the nature of this dispute and the complexity of, and urgency of this, that we would have this. It's, uh, it, it's at least difficult uh, to figure out what to do. So if I had to guess as to what her analysis might have been, and that of Chief Justice Roberts, it would be that they reached some kind of conclusion that, you know, we don't want the, the uh, courts to be weaponized. We don't want to be perceived 
certainly as justices, as playing only on the team of the political party of the presidents who appointed us. And therefore, I, we, speaking, you know, I, either as Justice, uh, uh, either as Chief Jeff, Justice Roberts uh, or Justice Barrett or both of them, uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to decide to uh, side with the Democrats on this one that, that, so that we don't over politicize this. But I, I really find that difficult to grasp that they would do it in that circumstance. Um, and yet I don't see a, a good reason. I, I don't see a, an explanation that makes a lot of sense. It goes much beyond that. Uh, because mm. I, I, I don't understand why it's a bad thing to have the state of Texas trying to protect the people of Texas from these swarms of people who are pouring across their borders without documentation and destroying property along the way, converting property as if it were their own and destroying it as they, uh, as they cross in illegally. I, I don't understand what the compelling need is. Or, or what principle of law would be violated by the state of Texas trying to protect the people of Texas? Let me ask you something. Um, the Constitution says that it is the the federal government's job to protect the borders, um, but they're not doing their job, obviously. Uh, in fact, they're enabling those um, people trying to come in, and they are enabling uh, drug cartels, drugs coming over, killing our citizens, Criminals coming over. We know terrorists have come over now. Uh, they're enabling those who rape and sell into sex slavery. I mean, it's it's bad stuff. It's not even close. And what the justices are saying is, Texas, you don't have the right to protect your own borders. That's our job. Um, let me let me ask you: If a military came over, they, let's say these ten million people all had military uniforms, um, but you know, only a few of them had guns and it, it was clear this was an invasion by an army and the federal government decided to say, nah, well, they, they can keep crossing in. Would they have the right to say to Texas or anybody else, you don't have the right to have a militia or, uh, you know, call up your national guard and, and push these people back. Is, is the Constitution a, a suicide pact? Certainly not. And, and, and specifically in that kind of circumstance, it wouldn't be. There are two separate provisions of the Constitution that tell us this. One is found in Article 4, Section 4, which says that the United States uh, shall guarantee to every state a Republican form of government. And on application of a state, uh, uh, typically the legislature, uh, uh, shall protect each of them from invasion. So that's an affirmative obligation by the United States to protect each state from invasion. Now, there's also a, a, uh, something that defends in the Constitution a separate right of the state to stand up for itself upon being invaded. And that's found in, in Article 1, Section 10, Clause 3, which uh, is a provision that tells the states a bunch of stuff that they can't do on their own without the consent of Congress, but then contains a carve out uh, for circumstances in which a state is actually invaded. Yeah, but the only in difference words, in one scenario in war, the, the only the only difference is in these two scenarios is 10 million people are coming over, uh, not in uniform, but right. That's it. I mean, it's an invasion. That's right. And it's no less of an invasion simply because they're not organized formally as a, a military or we don't think of them. They, they, they are not a military, but it's an invasion nonetheless. Uh, throughout history, there have been uh, instances of invasions of uh, many countries around the world. Uh, uh, some are armed, organized invasions. Others are not. But it's an invasion nonetheless. They are being invaded by people who don't belong there and people who uh, threaten to subvert the order of things and the rule of law as they enter. So the, the fact that there is an invasion and the fact that the state of Texas feels the need to protect its own citizens from this puts Texas, in my view, in a very solid position. Now, I assume that for the four justices who dissented, that is, for Justices Thomas, 
Alito, Kavanaugh, and Gorsuch, that that was their rationale. We're all still grasping to understand what the rationale of the majority was, other than, as you say, uh, probably reason, well, immigration is the, the thing that is done by the federal government, and it's not done by the state of Texas, therefore case closed. But that doesn't answer the question. It doesn't answer the, the Article 1, Section 10, or the Article 4, Section 4 question that we just discussed. And as a practical matter, it leaves the state of Texas in an untenable position. Okay, so now, Mike, I, 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 we have to have a serious adult conversation. So we have to start modeling these conversations and having these conversations and, uh, and have them as rational, reasonable citizens of a republic and uh, as adults and if you as a listener can't handle that, then you should go away um, because I think some questions need to be asked. And if not now, very soon on whatever the next topic might be, we'll go there here in 60 seconds. You know, Mike, um, there was a guy named Martin Luther King. I know you know, uh, and he, he taught people how to resist peacefully. And uh, nobody's teaching that. Nobody's pushing for that. Ah, our pastors are all out to lunch. Um, but there are people now who are saying, uh, we need to go. In fact, could you read Tucker Carlson's tweet uh, from yesterday? I uh, don't have that handy, but I can look for it. it basically, he says, where are the men of Texas standing up? Well, the men of Texas standing up, um, I, I, I don't know exactly what that means, Tucker, um, because many of us are standing up and we're speaking out. At what point um, do people, uh, are people justified at all to say, yeah, it makes me kind of like them, but we got to stop this? So, in other words, defying the Supreme Court and just doing it anyway. I don't like that. Now, have, it, it, look, uh, the rule of law is important to us. That's the whole reason why Texas is trying to take this action to begin with, is to preserve the rule of law. And for that reason, uh, everything possible needs to be done uh, to comply with the rule of law, even if it means going along with a, a, a court order uh, that one doesn't like, and uh, finding other ways uh, to be persuasive to get it done. But keep in mind something, Glenn. Um, the, the Supreme Court's order from yesterday does not order the state of Texas to do anything. As I read it, all it says is that they vacate the Fifth Circuit's order from the 19th of December, which had itself enjoined uh, the Biden administration from taking down the barricades. So there, there's nothing affirmatively that the state of Texas has to do in order to comply with this uh, order from the Supreme Court. It just lifts the legal impediment from the Biden administration that had previously told them, don't take down the barricades. Right. So one interesting question is, what exactly is the Biden administration going to do now? Is the Biden administration really, seriously, with a straight face, are, are they going to say, yes, cut the wires? Yes. Remove all the concertina wire? Yes. And, um, and do all that. Uh, Glenn, remember something. We, we have seen in the last month more people pouring across our border unlawfully uh -huh. than has ever been observed uh -huh. in our nearly two and a half centuries of existence as a nation. And our Border Patrol agents and everybody else who works with them on this, they're all overwhelmed. I've been down to the border just in the last few weeks alone. I lived down uh, on the border in the McCown area as a missionary for two years. I know this area well. Are they really going to say, this is where we want our, our, our efforts focus to be going in there, removing barricades, whose sole purpose is to protect the people of the state of Texas and, frankly, even the people who are being human trafficked along uh, the border? Aren't they really going to say that's where yeah. we want them? Yeah. Bring up the wire cutters. Stop processing everything they, else. They, stop. They, everything else you're doing. They've they already really done that, do Mike. That. They've already done that. They were cutting the wires in Texas. I mean, they, they what makes you think they won't do that? For a few weeks. What?
What? They, they, they were cutting them. They had to stop for three weeks. But in the meantime, Texas put down a whole lot more wire. And they've got more wire now. I mean, it, this really would be a massive undertaking. And if after, uh, after the month of December 2023, just last month, are they really going to go back in and undertake that huge effort again? Mm-hmm. If so, this raises all kinds of other questions. And if so, I think this could end up being the very best thing, the single greatest momentum uh, uh, producing exercise for the Donald Trump campaign. Because this is the president of the United States who loves lawlessness if this is truly what he wants to do. And we've got to make that point loud and clear.